well. The Night Beat starts right now. Gun violence erupts across San Antonio this weekend, leaving several people injured and San Antonio police working to find the shooters. And a train engineer forced to pull the brakes after a man on the track disappears from sight where he was discovered after the train came to a stop. And smoke billows from a Texas neighborhood after a Navy jet crashes. The pilots able to eject just in time what caused that aircraft to go down. But first, a man on a bike allegedly threatening to shoot officers is now dead. Tonight, a San Antonio police officer on administrative duty after the shooting the man. It happened early this morning on Martin Street on the west side. Yeah, neighbors tell the night team's Alyssa Cole what they saw and heard. Here by Martin and Murray Streets on Sunday morning, San Antonio police officers made an attempt to stop a man riding a bicycle through a residential neighborhood. The reason why? According to Police Chief William McManus, the biker fit the description as a possible suspect with 11 outstanding warrants. But when the officer tried to stop the man on the bike, they say he resisted. He began to fight the officers. The chief tells us body camera footage captured the moment when the man on the bike said this to police. I have a gun. I'm going to shoot you. And I believe he said that twice. After that, they say the man reached for his waistband and police fire three rounds, striking the possible suspect. We walked through the neighborhood today and asked people what they heard and saw. One man tells us he could hear the gunshots while having his morning coffee. We heard four shots this morning, me and my wife. And by the time we came out, they already had the body laying on the sidewalk, covered up with a yellow yellow blanket. Mike Biddencourt says he was startled by the gunfire and shocked to see the activity happening outside his front door. They had about nine cars or ten cars of police and two ambulances. Now, police tell us the man on the bike had identification for several people on him at the time. They're still working to find out exactly who he is. Now, it's still unclear whether or not the man had a gun on him at the time of the incident. But we have been told one of the officers involved has been treated for a broken hand. Alyssa Cole, case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. A man shot in the chest and arm during what police say may have been a botched robbery attempt. Officers say that man jumped the counter inside a smoke shop at the Crown Meadows Shopping Center near Ingram and Calabria. An employee behind the counter shot the suspect. Police say after being hit, that suspect was able to run across the street. Officers found him behind another store in that area. He was taken to University Hospital in serious condition. Police still investigating. Police are looking for a gunman who shot an eight year old boy today. The boy now recovering after being shot while playing video games in his room. The shooting happened just after five o'clock this morning at a home on Halley Spirit near Ray Ellison Boulevard and Loop 410. The boy told police he was upstairs in his room when someone started shooting at the house. He was left shot in his left shin and taken to the hospital. He is expected to survive. Now to a running gun battle with more than 100 bullets flying in a west side neighborhood. When the smoke cleared, one man was hospitalized as police try to piece together what happened. The night team's Camilla Wada spoke to a neighbor who describes the wild late night shootout. Alejandro Jimenez heard the pops of gunshots in front of his home near Ingram and Marbach. They started shooting more crazier, which sounded like a pistol, a rifle, and a shotgun. According to police, it started around 1130 last night. The drivers of two cars approached each other for what police describe as a drug deal. While in the car, they began shooting at each other and kept firing as they made their way down the street, leaving chaos in their wake. During the shooting, some neighbors were outside their home. I was scared for the kids. When I walked out the house and the shooting was going on, I saw the girls, that, that girl that's standing in the corner with the, I guess her sisters or whatnot, they were rushing inside the house. And Two women were caught in the exchange of gunfire, and you can see that from the bullet holes in this Dodge Charger. Fortunately, both women are okay. Bullets also hit two homes along the street. We weren't sure if it was a firecracker, firecracker or not. And then uh, once we heard the shotgun in the second, that's when I was like, okay, those are bullet shots. A 19 year old who was driving one of the cars was shot in the back several times. He crashed his car into another parked on the street. He's now at University Hospital in critical condition. Police are still searching for the other people involved. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News.
Another shooting to tell you about this one, sending two people to the hospital in critical condition and two others facing questions from police. Officers were able to uh, were called out to Noblewood Drive near East Houston Street around uh, 11 o'clock this morning. Police arrived and found two people inside a car with gunshot wounds. Both victims rushed to the hospital. Police believe that shooting may have actually started at a nearby gas station and ended at that other location. They also say the vehicle the two victims were in had been reported stolen. A man trapped on the tracks after being hit by a train near downtown overnight. SAPD says it happened near West Laurel Street on the west side. Initially, police couldn't find the man after he was hit. Eventually, they discovered he was underneath the train. He was taken to BAMC, and at last check, he was listed in critical condition. Detectives are still investigating what happened and trying to determine why he was on the tracks in the first place. Happening right now, the city of Lytle under a boil water alert. Crews there discovered a water problem that is now worse than originally thought. City officials say crews were attempting to fix a damaged line when they came across two large valves that needed to be replaced. They were scheduled to start doing that repair work tonight at 10 o'clock. The water system will be shut down and residents are being told to boil the water at least until Tuesday. A bird to blame for a U.S. Navy plane crashing into a Texas neighborhood today. A woman passing by the crash scene recorded this video. The pilots, a military instructor and student, were reportedly on a routine training flight out of Corpus Christi International Airport. You can see in the video released by the military, the bird strike causing the pilots to eject from the aircraft. The jet crashed in the backyard of a home on Lake Worth. The fire department says three homes in total were damaged and three people had minor injuries after that crash sparked a small fire. Both pilots are in the hospital, one of them listed in serious condition, but with non-life-threatening injuries. Back here at home, curriculum and instruction during a post-pandemic school year comes with major adjustments. But administrators at Northside ISD are finding ways to make it work. This morning, as part of our Leading SA segment, our GMSA team spoke with Dr. Janice Jordan about the challenges they've faced so far and how they're working to move forward. We anticipated it would take us, you know, multiple years for students to get back to pre-pandemic levels in their reading performance and mathematics performance. Math in particularly has been hit the hardest. Uh, the great news is our students, through the tremendous work of our teachers um, and parents coming together, we've seen terrific gains. Uh, we still have a ways to go, though. The district is also working towards expanding their efforts in STEM courses for students, and they are always looking for community input on how to improve. To watch the full interview, just head over to KSAT.com and click the Leading Essay tab. All right, taking a look outside with live cam this Sunday night. We are pretty quiet here in San Antonio after an incredibly hot end to the weekend. Temperatures right now in the 80s across a good portion of the area. Hopefully you were able to stay cool out there this afternoon because yes, that summer like pattern continued and that will be the case as we head into the upcoming work week. Let's take a look at the almanac data for this Sunday. 95 was the high here in San Antonio, about five degrees above the average of 90 four degrees below the record of 99 that was set back last year. Again, temperatures are slowly making their way through the 80s tonight as well. 84 over at Stinson, 85 at Kelly. It's going to be another warm and muggy day to start off the work week for your Monday. Temperatures in the 70s tomorrow morning transition to the mid 90s again tomorrow afternoon. So copy and paste conditions tomorrow. Really more of the same thanks to high pressure and control this week. Those 90 degrees continue. We'll talk all about that coming up in weather. Still ahead on the night beat, San Antonio Fire Department, the national benchmark when it comes to a life-saving program. How in the field blood transfusions have fire departments around the country looking to model San Antonio. Plus, a sprinkle and dash of your favorite cooking herb could have you mixing toxic metals into your food. The herbs that are most problematic and the simple thing you can do to keep your healthy meal good for you. And the UK is set to offer their final bows to their beloved queen. Funeral services for Queen Elizabeth II will be held tomorrow and will now include her great grandchildren. The latest from London is next. 
Queen Elizabeth II will be laid to rest tomorrow morning, and we're learning Prince George and Princess Charlotte will walk in the procession behind her coffin. They're expected to walk behind their parents, William and Catherine, the Prince and Princess of Wales. Hundreds of heads of state and dignitaries from around the world, including President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, are already in London to mourn with the royal family. ABC's Faith Abube in London with the latest. World leaders streaming into Westminster Hall Sunday to bid final farewell to Britain's longest reigning monarch, President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden, paying their respects over Queen Elizabeth's coffin. The first couple then signing two condolence books in the Queen's memory. Our hearts go out to you and uh, you were fortunate to have had her for 70 years. We all were. The world's better for her. At 8 p.m. local time, the United Kingdom standing still. One minute of silence in honor of the Queen, followed by applause and cheers in the streets. Crowds already building for the funeral procession Monday. Some started camping out Friday for a front row seat. Temperatures on these cold hard sidewalks have been unforgiving the past few nights. However, the early campers tell me they couldn't miss the opportunity to see the royal funeral. This will never happen again in my lifetime. So I don't want to miss it. Authorities expect a million people to come out and about 500 heads of state and dignitaries from around the world to attend. London now preparing for the most challenging policing event in its history. The threat ranging from pickpockets to terrorist attacks. There will be military personnel, extra CCTV, sniffer dogs and police for security. That incredible line of tens of thousands of mourners streaming into Westminster Hall, winding down Sunday night. At times, the line stretched for five miles, the wait times upwards of 24 hours. But those who've come out after seeing the coffin say the wait was well worth it. She was, she was amazing, and I just felt like I had to show my respect. And guests for the funeral will start arriving around 4 a.m. Eastern time, but that big procession won't begin until 5.30 a.m. In London, Faith Abube, ABC News. Now to Hurricane Fiona causing catastrophic flooding in Puerto Rico after making landfall around 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2 p.m. Central Time. It is impacting the southwestern coast with winds of 85 miles per hour, according to the National Hurricane Center. Officials also forecasting 12 to 18 inches of rainfall, with some areas expected to get a maximum of 30 inches of rain. All of Puerto Rico lost power early today as a Category 1 storm approached. One river in the southeast has risen more than 25 feet, according to officials there. That breaks a previous record set back in 2017 on this exact day during Hurricane Maria. Hurricane Fiona is the third of the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. We just hate to see them going through that, all that power loss. Again, you know, they just know. went through something very similar. To the day. Exactly. I was These looking storms at video. cause a lot of problems. They, yeah. they really, really do. And we just got some brand new information in from the National Hurricane Center on Fiona. Now, as it really starts to approach the eastern half of the Dominican Republic. So let's get you the latest information there. Winds still sustained at about 85 miles per hour, gusting upwards of about 105 miles per hour. It is still moving to the west north northwest at about 10 miles per hour. You can see there that eye now approaching the Dominican Republic. It officially strengthened into that hurricane status earlier this morning and then made landfall in Puerto Rico earlier this afternoon. You can see hurricane warnings as well as tropical storm warnings and even some tropical storm watches continue for that area, even reaching up to the Turks and Caicos region as well. This is expected to turn farther up to the north as we head into the upcoming work week and as it churns over the warm waters of the Atlantic there, potentially strengthening into a category two, maybe even a category three storm as we near the middle of the week. The good news for the United States is as of the latest forecast track, this is expected to stay east of the eastern United States coastline, but unfortunately it could bring some pretty big impacts to portions of Bermuda later this week. So, of course, we will still continue to keep eyes on it. But back here at home, it has been a quiet night to cross south central Texas, but still plenty muggy. If you do step outside, temperatures currently in the 80s for most of us. 81 up in New Braunfels this hour. Upper 70s, though, out in Rock Springs in the Hill Country. 86 in Hondo and 83 out in Pleasanton. We are quiet out there in terms of radar. Only found a very few isolated showers closer to the coast earlier this afternoon in 
and evening. Notice across the entire state, we are pretty quiet as well. There's some more widespread shower activity in northern Mexico that also transitions into portions of New Mexico as well. But for the Lone Star State, high pressure is the name of the game, and that will continue to be the story as we head into the upcoming work week. What we often find with these high pressure systems, sinking air. And as that air sinks to the ground, it compresses and it warms. It also does squash those rain chances as well for the most part. So overall, expect us to be pretty dry the next several days and plenty toasty out there as well. So here's your Monday morning. We start off in the low to mid 70s, maybe a few upper 60s across portions of the hill country. 75, I think, is where we'll wake up here in San Antonio. Also like this morning because of the mugginess, that moisture and humidity in the air. I do think we could find some more cloud cover work in throughout the first half of the day tomorrow, but also like today that does look to scatter out and break up even more so into the afternoon. More peaks of sunshine really helping those temperatures crank up yet again. Low to mid 90s is expected. 96 that forecast high in New Braunfels, 95 in Gonzales, 92 out in Beeville, 94 in Pleasanton. Of course, with that humidity in place, though, those feels like temperatures will likely reach into the upper 90s in a few low triple digits. So it is going to be another day to stay hydrated if you are planning on being out and about. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast throughout the morning hours. We look to see those temperatures warm into the low to mid 80s by 10 to 11 o'clock into the early afternoon, upper 80s and low 90s in store. And then those temperatures warm even more so as we see more of that sunshine return into the south central Texas sky. A very isolated chance that we find a stray shower. I think the better potential to find just a few isolated splashes of rain like today is down closer to the coast. More of the same is in the works for your Tuesday and into Wednesday, but notice maybe a slightly cooler start. That is thanks to some slightly drier air that we'll try to mix in as well. But with that drier air, yes, we're able to cool down just a little bit more so through the mornings, but on the flip side of that, we warm up as well. So the first day of fall on Thursday, not really feeling like fall. We've got a forecast high in the upper 90s, so we'll continue to keep eyes on that warming trend. No need to get out the tall boots and sweaters yet, ladies. Not yet. I don't even want I don't even want to put uh, pumpkins out. I feel yeah. like they'll sizzle. We did it already today. We'll of be course right back. You did. <laughs> Well, this month is Hispanic Heritage Month, and much like Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lewis in the South, the late Willie Velasquez was a voting rights pioneer. Posthumously awarded, awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, Velasquez went from being an outspoken voice at St. Mary's University to creating the Southwest Voter Registration and Education Project. Our Jesse DeGollado has some personal insight into the man and his family. Um, Among her hundreds of family photos, this is Stella Aguilar's favorite, the little rascal's one of her looking just like Darla and her brother like Waldo. I think he was that, that intelligent little boy that always used big words. Willie Velasquez would later use his gift to both inspire and challenge to empower Mexican-Americans a few decades earlier. Willie Velasquez came here many times long before the Bear County Elections Office was here. This is where the boy who would become a voting rights champion would come visit his grandmother's house. The boy whose family knew him as Billy, then Bill as he got older. At Central Catholic High School on scholarship, they called him Willie. Yet the first time his sister did, too. Willie, he says, that sounds so strange coming from you. Don't call me Willie, call me Bill. Soon enough, Willie Velasquez practically became a household name for Mexican-Americans, rallying, organizing, leading one of the first movements of its kind, registering Mexican-Americans to vote. Yet many in his family didn't really realize what he was doing. He never bragged about what he did. Aguilar says it wasn't until presidential contender Michael Dukakis came to pay his respects after her brother's death. Did her own son understand? They say the discrimination and inequality Velasquez and his family had witnessed growing up on the West Side, combined with the violent, often deadly struggle for civil rights in the South, just to register people to vote. Are why George Velasquez says his brother took on the fight that he did. So the voting is the power right there. But we have to vote. Jesse DeGollado, KSAT 12 News. 
Get this, Cooper Rush is now 2-0 and as the Cowboys starting quarterback after their last second win against Cincinnati. With more on that and what's on instant replay tonight, let's check out our Greg Simmons. <laughs> that was pretty incredible. I didn't think they were going to be able to pull it off, did you? And the Houston Texans can't get into the end zone today and never fall to the Broncos coming up tonight on a brand new edition of instant replay. After scoring 17 points in the first half, the Cowboys could only muster three in the second half against the Bengals. But as it turns out, it's the most important three points of the game because it meant victory with no time on the clock. We got all the highlights for you. We'll take you inside the Cowboys winning locker room. Play fake. Wilson taking a shot deep for his tight end. And what a catch! Eric Sober with a touchdown! The Houston Texans dropped their first game to kick off the 2022 season as they let Russell Wilson pick up his first victory ever as the new quarterback of the Denver Broncos. What went wrong for Houston? We will show you. Can't hit. Wilson the rebound. And this season has come up aces. The city of Las Vegas has its first major professional title. And Becky Hammond wins her first WNBA championship in her first season as head coach after leading the Las Vegas Aces to victory today in Connecticut. You will hear from the former Spurs assistant, now championship coach tonight. All that plus what a performance by UTSA against Texas for the first time in school history before the third largest crowd in DKR history. And can Cooper Rush keep the Cowboys in contention until Dak Prescott returns tonight? You decide. Instant replay is live and is right after the night beat. A lot to talk about. Yeah, this is a packed show. All right, Greg, we'll see you in just a little bit. Are the spices you're adding to your food full of more than just flavor? We'll tell you how to spot the materials you could find in your spices before you season a meal. And bringing asylum seekers straight to people's doors. That's the goal behind this latest move from Republican state governors. What's being done once the asylum seekers make it to their next destination? And when we return, thousands of lives are now saved after a whole blood program initiated by the San Antonio Fire Department. The milestone that program hit and the plans for the future. The San Antonio Fire Department is at the top of the ladder when it comes to saving the lives of patients who are losing blood in the field. Only four years old, the department's blood transfusion program is now the gold standard across the country. Yeah, that's because EMTs have whole blood available on ambulances and at trauma scenes. The program's very first patient, now its biggest advocate. Three years ago, Tiffany Kieschnick was inside this car. I went to the gas station to pick up an IC and ended up having a stroke on my way home and I flipped my car into a ditch. San Antonio EMS had just begun carrying whole blood to trauma scenes to allow for immediate transfusions. Had they not had whole blood on that ambulance, I was not going to make it. Kieschnick was the very first patient to receive whole blood in the field, not just in San Antonio, but in the nation. SAFD created the program. When I came up as a paramedic, the only thing we could do was start IVs. Now now, Fire Chief Charles Hood says his crews have just administered the 1,000th unit of whole blood in the field. This is one of the eight units that carries this whole blood on board. They either can drive this out to a crime or an accident scene, or they can administer it right here in the ambulance. The blood kept in a rigorously tested cooler, keeping the blood viable for the whole 24-hour shift. If you touch it, it's actually kind of cold, right? Uh -huh. So you don't really want to put cold fluid, especially this cold, into someone's body. All right, so we have a warmer that uh, we use here. The blood will run through the tubing and into the warmer here. SAFD engineers Roy Zamora and Samuel Guzman say the whole process can take just five to 10 minutes. I've been in contact with the outside agencies uh, as well as the Department of Defense. We've had some relationships with the military. Um, so um, it's really gone global at this point. EMS medic officer Lieutenant William Bullock has taken calls from Austin, Seattle, even New York City asking for training. I'm glad that, you know, my story got out there and it got more people to jump on board. Knowing that she was the first of so many that will be saved. Across America, five people shot over the weekend in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, after police there say a fight escalated into gunshots. Officers say four people showed up to the hospital with gunshot wounds. A few hours later, a fifth person, a woman, hit by a bullet, showed up to be treated, but police say she was arrested shortly thereafter. Everyone is expected to recover. Police still trying to figure out what led up to that shooting. 
Defense attorneys for the Parkland school shooter in Florida are seeking to remove the judge presiding over the case. The move comes after a heated exchange in court between the judge and the shooter's lawyer, both blaming each other of unprofessionalism. The prosecution says the defense's complaint isn't grounds for the judge to be disqualified. To international news, the U.S. Geological Survey says Taiwan was hit by a 6.9 magnitude earthquake today. Images from the area show some of the devastation suffered along the southeastern coast. Volleyball players managed to escape just in time as the roof of a gym collapsed. The island's National Fire Agency says four people trapped under a collapsed building were successfully rescued. To Ukraine now, where Ukrainian prosecutors say they've now discovered so-called Russian torture rooms in the Kharkiv region. Officials say more than 10 of those rooms were discovered after the Russian retreated. They said they were able to find the secret locations by following the route of Russian troops in the Northeast. Inside the rooms, alleged torture devices. Nearby mass graves were found, revealing civilians, including children. Well, the number of migrant apprehensions reaching an unprecedented 1.8 million on track to surpass 2 million this fiscal year. That's according to data from Customs and Border Protection. Yeah, the influx straining the resources of border cities. Some Republican governors have begun sending those migrants to sanctuary cities without any planning or warning to lawmakers. Here's ABC's Phil Lipoff with the details. Sunday morning, an El Paso-sponsored bus carrying asylum seekers arrived in New York City. One day earlier, a bus sent by Texas Governor Greg Abbott arrived at the vice president's residence carrying another 50 migrants, after already sending dozens there on Thursday. El Paso Mayor Oscar Leeser says his city saw approximately 2,000 migrants in a single day last week, but emphasized they would be treated compassionately. We don't send anyone where they don't want to go. We make sure we help them, and we put them on buses with food and make sure they get to their destination with and make sure that we always continue to treat people like human beings. New York City's Mayor Eric Adams is calling for more coordination between the federal government and the states impacted by the crisis, as Governor Abbott has sent some 11,000 migrants from Texas to Chicago, New York, and Washington. We reached out and stated that let's coordinate and work together uh, so we could deal with this crisis together. They refused to do so. I don't think it was politically expedient for them to coordinate. Uh, it was more to do uh, this basic political showmanship that you're seeing now. Immigration lawyers are still dealing with the fallout after Florida Governor Ron DeSantis flew two planes with about 50 migrants to Martha's Vineyard Thursday. DeSantis contended that the Massachusetts island claims it's a sanctuary for undocumented migrants, while President Biden calls it a political stunt. It's un-American, it's reckless, and we have a process in place to manage migrants at the border. But DeSantis saying the move draws attention to what he says is the Biden administration's ineffective immigration policy. It's only when you have 50 illegal aliens end up in a very wealthy, rich sanctuary enclave that he All right, taking a look outside once again with live cam here this Sunday night. Temperature at about 83 degrees here in San Antonio. Only have a few more official days of the summer season. And boy, is it really going to feel like summer. Earlier today, we started off in the 70s, a bit more cloud cover. Time lapse view, though, shows that that was able to scatter out more sunshine, really helping those temperatures warm into the 90s for the majority of the area. Again, we hit 95 again here in San Antonio. More of the same is in the works into the upcoming work week. Also, the moisture, at least over the next 48 hours, not really going to go anywhere. So we will hold on to those hot and humid conditions, morning 70s transitioning to the afternoon 90s, potentially building heat as we get ready to kick off the fall season officially on Thursday. And unfortunately, no significant rain chances currently on the seven day. We'll get you a full look at that planning forecast and what we can expect over the next few days in a few. Mia, yeah. and we apologize for that story cutting out earlier on immigration. We have the full story on KSAT.com. Next, straight ahead on the night beat, a new program with a novel idea being tested to make sure blood supplies don't get too low. We've got details on a new home blood donation service. And when you shake in some herbs and spices into your recipes, you could be serving up more than flavor. The dangerous toxins you may be adding into your food right after the break.
Now don't concern about the herbs and spices in your kitchen. It's a great way to kick up the flavor, but tests show you may also be adding concerning amounts of heavy metals. Yeah, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us which three raise the most concern and how you can easily grow your own. Maybe go with here. So if you clip the top, say uh, eight or 10 inches, the rest will continue to grow. Basil, rosemary, and thyme. This is the Ramsey family herb garden. We're gonna make pesto out of this. It's more than a tasty hobby though, it's a solution. Consumer Reports tests revealed that about one third of the store-bought spices they looked at contained potentially dangerous heavy metals, including lead and arsenic, enough to raise health concerns when eaten regularly in typical serving sizes. The three store-bought herbs they found are most problematic are ones you probably pull out of the cupboard a lot. Basil, thyme, and oregano. The good news, they're also among the simplest to grow. If you have a sunny spot in your yard or even a windowsill, you can grow herbs to use fresh or dry yourself. Herbs grow well in separate pots with drainage, so put a few stones in the bottom of a pot with a hole in it. To grow herbs free of heavy metals, start with the soil. By potting soil with a seal from the Organic Materials Review Institute to be sure it's been assessed for heavy metals. It's easy to dry and store your herbs too. Wash and dry the leaves thoroughly to avoid mold. Put them in a paper bag for several weeks, then store in airtight containers where they can last a few years. You can speed up the drying process by using a toaster oven or an air fryer set on dehydration. And bonus, once you get started, growing your own is a flavorful and healthy way to save money. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Still to come, you've heard about doctors making house calls, but what about a phlebotomist? how you can donate blood at home. A blood center in Florida making it easier for people to donate blood. Yeah, in Sarasota, the nation's first and only program is underway where residents can donate without having to visit a blood center. The blood center actually goes to them. The Suncoast Blood Centers allows donors to request at-home donations. The center works around the blood donor's schedules to set up a shuttle for a bus with a trained phlebotomist to come on out. Officials say the convenience allows donors with scheduling or mobility issues to continue to give blood. The donated home service runs six days a week out of three different buses. The service began in 2020 when the height of the pandemic made it harder than ever for people to donate. Well, it's going to be fall, but you'd never know. Yeah. <laughs> You would never know, especially like after summer. today. I walked outside yeah. for just a little bit, immediately reached for the water bottle. Cut yeah. the humidity with the knife. Exactly. Yeah. That's the saying, you know, it's not yeah. the heat, it's the humidity. It that is. is exactly what we saw out there today. And that's really going to be the case, at least over the next 48 hours before we try to mix in some slightly drier air. But it's muggy even out there this Sunday night. Let's take a look at current temperatures outside here in San Antonio. 84 degrees right now. Notice that dew point temperature, 70, which means it feels more like the upper 80s still late tonight as well. Southeast wind on hand at about 11 miles per hour. That's important because that southeasterly wind is actually what's pumping in more of that Gulf moisture. Upper 70s out at Bernie Stage, 82 in Bulverde, 81 in Converse, 78 out in Seguin. This hour again, those southeasterly winds continue to pump in those elevated humidity levels, especially along and east of the I-35 corridor. You can see this darker green color. That is that moisture that we will try and put to work again through the overnight hours in the form of some added cloud cover. You likely saw that outdoors earlier this morning. I think we will find more of that cloud cover move back in by wake up time on Monday, but also like today throughout the morning hours that starts to break up just a little bit more. We see more peaks of sunshine as we head into the second half of the day really help Helping those temperatures warm up. So it's going to be another sticky start stepping out for the Monday morning drive. We've got a low of about 71 up in Bulverde, 73 out in Hondo, 71 in Utopia. We'll wake up around 75 here in San Antonio and 75 out in Floresville as well as we continue to see more of that sunshine take back over into the afternoon. Those temperatures crank up yet again about five degrees above the average for your Monday here in San Antonio 
around 95. 92 is that forecast high in Bernie. 94 out in Rio Medina. 93 out west down Highway 90 in Uvalde. But as we head into the afternoon as well, with that humidity, of course, your feels like temperatures, what it feels like to your body when you step outdoors in the upper 90s, potentially approaching the triple digits yet again. So if you are planning on being outside, it's going to be another day to stay hydrated and of course take it easy out in the heat. So once again, here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We start to see more of that sunshine take over into the early afternoon hours, especially temperatures climbing 87 by noon, 89 by about 1 p.m. 95 that high here in San Antonio, a southeast wind on hand at about 5 to 10, maybe 5 to 15 miles per hour, especially through the afternoon and just that very isolated chance for a stray shower. Again, most of the state of Texas is quiet. A little bit of rain just off to our west near New Mexico, reaching down into northern Mexico. Some additional rain across the far west coast and even up into the Pacific Northwest. The potential for a few severe storms up in the Midwest, close to the Chicago as well as St. Louis areas. But again, for us here in the Lone Star State, it's just going to be hot. It's going to be humid over the next couple of days and mostly dry. Maybe a few coastal showers possible throughout the afternoon tomorrow, just thanks to the moisture on hand. High pressure is going to be the name of the game, which means most of us will be quiet here over the next several days and plenty toasty through the morning hours. Temperatures in the low to mid 70s. Maybe as we mix in some slightly drier air throughout the second half of the work week, we could see those temperatures through the overnight dip down just a little bit more, maybe a few more upper 60s in the hill country by Thursday and Friday mornings. But again, that dry air is really able to heat up quickly, so those temperatures could climb into the mid to upper 90s by the back half of the week. We'll keep eyes on it again really quickly. Hurricane Fiona still bringing some very heavy rainfall as well as some gusty winds to parts of Puerto Rico as well as the Dominican Republic that is expected to move farther northward and stay out in the Atlantic. No big issues for the East Coast, so that is the good news here. Here at home, guys, it's just going to be plenty quiet and hot this week. We'll have to hope for more full light conditions next week. Yeah, let's speak it into existence. Yes. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna me. A unique King conquers the box office this weekend. More on how the Woman King took the number one spot. Bullet Train keeps chugging along. Two and a half million dollars put the action thriller in fifth place. The comic mystery See How They Run debuted in fourth place, taking in $3.1 million. Pearl, the prequel to X, opened in third place with $3.12 million. After one weekend on top, Barbarian slipped to second, scaring up $6.3 million. A decisive victory for The Woman King. Viola Davis stars in the historical action flick, which began its run in first place with $19 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The UTSA Roadrunners hang with the Texas Longhorns through three quarters before the third largest crowd in Royal Memorial Stadium history. Yeah, and believe it or not, we're at the halfway mark of the high school football season. Plenty to show off in the best of big game coverage. And who's going to do it? Our Greg Simmons. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's just something to watch. That we're already at the halfway mark. Yeah. It seems like we just started yesterday, right? And Bam Rodriguez successfully defends his WBC Super Flyweight title coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Brady motions out backwards pass. Is he going to throw? He is. He's looking for Franklin. It's floating. He makes the catch. Yeah, yeah, how did he do it? You're right. What an effort by UTSA as they face University of Texas for the first time in their young football history. And at one point led the Longhorns by 10 points for over 102,500 fans. We've reached the halfway mark of the high school football regular season, but not before the best of big game coverage and our all-new 12's top 12 and sub 5A 12's top 12 as well. There's a first angle right there that we're so used to seeing from Bam Rodriguez. All that plus Bam Rodriguez successfully defends his WBC Super Flyweight title, but not before the bout had to go the distance. And highlights from every single game played in the NFL today. All that plus the Cowboys' last second victory and a play of the week you got to see to believe from the team that upset the Aggies. Instant replay is live and it is next. Appalachian State. Honestly. Exciting finish yesterday. Yeah, that was something. All right, Greg, we'll see you in just a little bit. And we'll see you after the break. 
finally tonight, something good. I love this one. Tonight we're introducing you to a watchdog with a bird's eye view. Meet Nala, the husky, who's the talk of the town because she loves to perch atop the roof of her home. She takes her security detail very seriously. Her owner says Nala just loves to run around on the rooftop. Now he says a lot of people have to stop and take a look to make sure they're really seeing a dog on the roof. And as you can see, they are. He says he does limit her time to about 20 to 30 minutes above ground. She's running fast. Mm -hmm. The neighbors have even given her an appropriate name, Pigeon. Pigeon. Pigeon the Watchdog. <laughs> That's going to do it for us, for all of us here at KSAT 12. Thanks for watching. Be sure to tune into Good Morning San Antonio for all your latest overnight news. An all-new instant replay starts right now. We got music, we got dreams, we got tacos, we got people, we got a great, great environment. This is Texas, baby. We do everything big. Oh, <laughs> well, we just drank and having a good time. About what? We're good. We're good. I'm not worried. Next man up. The quarterback? Nah, we good. We got defense. We got people on offense. We, we don't take this all the way. Oh. And rush we trust. Go Cowboys! It's a replay starts right now. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a brand new edition of Instant Replay. The Dallas Cowboys went into this afternoon's game as seven and a half point underdogs following their less than stellar performance on opening night against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And that was with their star quarterback for most of the night. Now they face the Bengals with backup Cooper Rush. Could he pull off another Minnesota miracle on game day? Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Almost everyone is counting the Cowboys out, but don't tell that to Cooper Rush. He went to work early. Cowboys' first drive of the game capped off by a nine-yard touchdown pass to Noah Brown. That's the Cowboys' first touchdown of the season, 7-0 Dallas, before the end of the quarter. Tony Pollard finds the end zone from a yard out, and Dallas is up 14-3 after one. Second quarter now. Cincinnati's quarterback Joe Burrow saw this four times in the first half. Dorrance Armstrong getting him for the sack and had two by the half. Burrow sacked four times at the break. Cowboys had a field goal, and it's 17-3. Cowboys, let's take it to the fourth down. It's 17-9, Cowboys. Since he takes almost nine minutes off the clock to drive downfield, Burrow finds T. Higgins for the five-yard touchdown. Two-point conversion is good. We're tied at 17 with 3.45 to play. Cowboys will get the last drive of the game with less than a minute to play. Cooper rush throws. The ball is actually tipped, but Noah Brown makes a spectacular catch for the 12-yard gain across midfield. Four seconds left. Brett Maher makes a 50-yard field goal, and the Cowboys win their first game of the season here is your final 20 to 17 dallas is now one on one more now from our larry ramirez in arlington now in his third stint with the Dallas Cowboys, kicker Brett Maher came through today when it mattered the most, nailing a 50-yard field goal for a walk-off win, 2017 Cowboys. Every opportunity is rewarding, uh, to be honest with you. Um, I'm happy to, to do my part with this group. Um, the guys in the locker room are awesome. Uh, that This whole game was um, a ton of fun to be a part of. This whole locker room is a ton of fun to be a part of. So I'm embracing the ride and, and doing my part. Can you just tell me your feelings and thoughts when you saw that field goal go through? When he came off his foot, I knew it was good. Yeah. He's done it more than one time here before, so just happy that we got the dub. Defense obviously kept us in tonight, and then Brett at the end uh, doing his job. And 88 on that last drive and the protection, and Noah Brown catching the tip ball. Um, it's pretty incredible. Coming up later, Cooper Rush is now 2-0 as a starting quarterback. Plus, the sports guys are here to talk about Cooper, UTSA football, and 210 BAM. Greg, back to you. <laughs> That's right. We've seen it in just a bit. Cowboys stats look like this. Micah Parsons had two sacks today, giving him 17 for his career, the most among any NFL player through their first 18 games of their career. Cowboys had six sacks today. The last time the Cowboys had six sacks in a game was 2018 against the Giants. Up next, they got a road trip headed to New York on Monday Night Football to take on the Giants at 7:15. Texas on the road for the first time this season in Denver to take on Russell Wilson and the Broncos. Game was tied at six at halftime. Take it to the third quarter. Wilson throws, but he will be picked off by Christian Kirksey near midfield. Houston would get down on the Broncos four yard line, but they couldn't punch it in. Settle for a field goal and lead nine to six. Four quarter. Wilson finds Eric Sober for the 22 yard touchdown. Broncos go back on top 13 to nine. Houston wouldn't get close to scoring again. Here's your final score. They fall 16 to nine. They drop to 0 one and one now. Quarterback Davis Mills was asked if he felt the offense left plays on the field late in that game. Definitely, yeah. I mean, that's what we always talk about in our quarterback room and on the team. Um, 
all our job is to stay close the whole game, and then we got to win the game in the fourth quarter. Um, when I mean the game's on the line, so um, tough one today. We just got to go out there and make our opportunities. All right, next up for the Texans, another road trip. This will be to Chicago Sunday at noon against the Bears. Commanders at line, second quarter. Jared Goff finds San Antonio's own Josh Reynolds in the back of the end zone with a three-yard touchdown, his first of the season. Goff had four touchdown passes. The Lions win their first game, 36-27. Panthers at Giants. Daniel Jones had 176 yards passing, and this touchdown in the third quarter. Graham Deneau added four field goals. The Giants are 2-0 with a 1916 victory. Buccaneers at Saints, fourth quarter. Jameis Winston got picked off three times, including this pick six by Mike Edwards, a six 68-yard touchdown. Bucks win it 20 to 10. Jets and Browns. Cleveland was up 30 to 17. New York scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns. With less than a minute and a half left in the game. Joe Flacco to Garrett Wilson connect for the second time today. That's their game winner. 22 seconds left. Jets win it 31-30. Pats and Steelers. Mac Jones had one touchdown pass. Damian Harris added 71 yards rushing. Another touchdown. That would be enough for the Pats to win 17-14 over the Steelers. Dolphins and Ravens. This one went down to the wire. Tua Tonga Viola finds Jalen Waddell for the seven-yard touchdown with 14 seconds left. Fish scored 28 points in the fourth quarter to come back and win it, 42-38. Seahawks at 49ers. Jimmy Garoppolo is back at the saddle again after San Fran lost Trey Lance in the first quarter. Jimmy G, 13-21 for 154 yards. One touchdown pass. He also ran in for another TD. Niners win it, 27-7. Colts and Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence is 25-30 for 235 yards passing. Two touchdowns. Matt Ryan was sacked five times. Picked off three times. The Jags win, 24 to nothing. Cardinals and Raiders. What an ending. Vegas is up 20 to nothing before the Cards forced overtime. Hunter Renfrew make the cap, but he gets hit by Isaiah Simmons, forcing the fumble. Byron Murphy picks it up and takes it all the way back for the 59-yard touchdown. Cardinals take it in overtime, 29-23. Falcons and Rams. Matthew Stafford had himself a game. He was 27-36, 272 yards and three touchdowns. Rams hold off. Falcons come back to win 31-27. It's their first win of the season. So local connections to the NFL today, including Josh Reynolds of the Lions out of John Jay. Three receptions, 38 yards, one touchdown. The Saints Marcus Davenport out of Stevens. Two tackles, one solo, one quarterback hit. The Steelers, DeMarvin Leal out of Judson. Two tackles, one solo, one pass defense. The Seahawks, Tariq Woolen out of UTSA. Three solo tackles, one block field goal. And the Broncos, Caden Stearns out of Steel. Six tackles, five solo. And the Bengals, Trey Flowers out of Judson High School. One solo tackle today. Time now for tonight's instant replay poll question. Can Cooper Rush keep the Cowboys in contention until Dak Prescott returns? Yes or no, vote now. We'll have the results at the end of the broadcast tonight. Congratulations to former Spurs assistant coach Becky Hammond, who led the Las Vegas Aces to their first WNBA title this afternoon. The Aces defeated Connecticut Sun 78-71 in Game 4 of the WNBA Finals this afternoon to win the series three games to one. Becky becomes the first head coach to win a WNBA title in her first season at the helm, and she's also the first former WNBA player to win the finals as a head coach. After the game, Becky was asked what she was feeling now that she's a champion. You know, when I took the job in December, I thought when I started kind of breaking down their rosters that um, I could do something with it. I, I had a vision of what I wanted to do with this team. It's a little surreal. Maybe you can call me back in like a week when it sinks in. All right, this is the first major sports championship for the city of Las Vegas. When we return, the Roadrunners clash with the Longhorns next. Brady motions out backwards pass. Is he going to throw? He is. He's looking for Franklin. It's floating. He makes the catch. How did he do that? I don't know. I, every time I see it, I don't know. UTSA took it to the UT and Austin in front of over 102,000 fans, the largest crowd to ever see the Roadrunners play. We'll break down the game. Meanwhile, the UIW Cardinals are 3-0 thanks for their latest win. We'll also have the best of big game covers, 12's top 12. Jesse Bam Rodriguez defends his title once again. Could he be boxing's fighter of the year? The sports guys decide live from San Antonio and in Arlington next.